Today, the title message is Doors of My Destiny Open. Can you shout it louder? But whether you like it or not, there is a day of trouble. Whether you like it or not, there is what? A day of trouble. There is a day of trouble. The day of trouble for Rachel was barrenness. And God remember Rachel. What happened? She said, the Lord has taken away my reproach. And the child that was born is this Joseph that we are talking about. Hallelujah. God will remember you. Amen. But you must do something, not just like that. What will make you, what will make God to remember you when you are not doing anything at all? Hmm? All of you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. God will remember you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Maybe you are tired of trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Me, I've never been tired because I know somebody that is strong and powerful. The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord is mighty in battle. You want to talk about your age? You want to talk about, uh, I'm not interested anymore. That's exactly what God will do. He will not ask you for permission. I thought we say amen out loud. Amen. The Shunammite woman said, don't tempt your servant, please. My husband is old. I'm not interested. <laughs> but because of what the Shunammite woman did, God remember her. The man of God said, by this time next year, you will conceive and give birth to a son. It came to pass. She conceived. She opposed everything. She had no faith. She was not interested anymore. Why she conceive? God will take away your reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Newspapers will come and interview you. Amen. Say, are you sure this is what happened to you? You say, yes. Amen. Amen. God will remember somebody here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are two ways that you can open every closed door. Two ways. Somebody can open door for you, or you can open it by yourself. Also, before you open those doors, there are special keys that you need to know. You cannot use the key of VW and open a Ferrari. They will say, something's wrong with you. Hey, but they will say, you're a thief. <laughs> Amen. There is what we call the key of knowledge. Somebody say, key of knowledge. There is what we call the key of the house of David. I'm not saying you. You say to get that key also in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is what we call the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say it out loud, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. There is what we call the key of Hades. There is what we call the key of death. Ah, if we have the key of Hades, we have the key of death, automatically you must have the key of life. Who's the key of life? Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. There is what we call the keys of the bottomless pit. You can also call it the key to the abyss. Key of the abyss. When you have those keys in your hand, you become fearless. Hallelujah. The person that has the key of this church, if you lock up the church, you will not come in. You stay outside. If you open the door, the, the, the door, the gate, then you have access, even your own house. Today, there are many kind of keys that you can use. I've seen people just waving hand at the door of your house, the door open. I say, ah, so you can also wave your hand. You don't put it, they say, ah, you see, these uh, keys can be lost. 
You can forget it somewhere and you will struggle. You just use your hand. Amen. There are many keys today. And I will talk about these two kind of keys. One of them is, uh, you still remember the car we drive in the past. Some of us still driving them up until now. He said the gear is manual. So you must go to gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five, gear six. Some gear six is reverse. Some gear six is speeding. And then we have uh, the automatic one. Those things met the word of God. It came after the word of God because the word of God has been there before. Jesus opened blind eyes with some keys. Some of the keys used them manually. He used manual keys. He have to go slowly with these things. Sometimes he used automatic keys. You know, Jesus can do anything, anytime, anywhere. In the book of John chapter 9, from verse 1 up to verse 7, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciple asked him, Rabbi, who sin, this man or his parent, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parent said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Verse 6, after saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. He did it manually. He went step by step spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva, put his own eyes. So it took time. He did it manually. Gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four. <laughs> he did not stop there. When you get into the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 22, you will see the same thing again. Jesus doing things manually. This is Jesus. Why is he going so slowly? Some people brought a man and they begged Jesus to touch him. Mark chapter 8 verse 23. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village, number one. Why? When he had spat on the man's eyes and put his hand on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? What Jesus could say, begin to see. Jesus is asked this question. Do you see anything? Listen to what this man said. Read it with me if you can. He look up and say, I see people. They look like three walking around. Ah, Jesus said, no, 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 no. Something must be wrong with this guy. I never made the eyes of human beings so that they can see people like trees walking around. Not that way. Once more. That is gear two, the second gear. Once more, Jesus put his hand on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. He saw everything clearly. Jesus did it again manually. Praise the Lord. When Jesus is the door of your healing, you must follow him. He's the ship. Uh, he is the door of the ship. Every ship must follow his shepherd, follow his instruction. That is the way Jesus wanted them to see manually. But when you get into the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46. Up to 52, the Bible speaks of a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus. 
He was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 51, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The, man, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Verse 52, read with me if you can. Go, say, Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately receive his sight and follow Jesus along the road. Jesus did not touch the blind man by Thomas. He spoke the word. He did it automatically. What kind of healing do you want from the Lord? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their distraction. You don't believe in the word of God that is coming to your way. You just need physical touch. Hmm. Last time, uh, one of uh, my people said to me, they said, Daddy, I said, yes, my son. You see that woman? I said, yes. She always manifests. I said, yes. Huh, Daddy, that woman said, she like it when you touch her. She will keep on manifesting so that you can touch her. I said, ah. By fire, by thunder. <laughs> I said, say, then God, you see, I'm missing it now. Uh, God said, take it easy. When you touch, I'm the one touching them. Amen. Amen. When you touch, I'm the one touching them, not you. Your mind is not in nonsense. Your mind is in the healing power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus will touch you right where you are. Amen. He's already touching somebody here. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Jesus did not touch the blind man, Bartimaeus. He received his sight. What I like the most from Bartimaeus, he followed Jesus. Many people want to follow Jesus, but they are blind people. Father, I ask you to open their eyes in Jesus' name. Some people, Jesus touched them and healed them. Ah, they start their own business. It should not be like that. So, our God can open door without using keys. Our God can open door without using keys. Our God can heal the leper without touching them. Amen. Naman, General Naman, a man of war, man of power, man of honor, but he was a leper. When he came to Elisha for healing, this is what Naaman said. I thought he will come and wave his hand and then I will receive my healing. Now he's sending me to go and take a bath in the Jordan River. Abana, Bafa, are they not better than uh, uh, Jordan River? The Spirit of God was in the Jordan River, my friend. Go and take a bath there. Seven times, dig yourself. That was... Manual healing. It was manually. Healing was manually. This man had extra knowledge. Remember, he's a general. He's a general. He knew that if Elisha just waved his hand, he received his healing. That's all. How do you call those things? Somebody say faith. faith. During these 90 days of prayer and fasting, I believe we'll do it in December. And the Lord will help us. You will take the sand off your property and come with it in the house. Don't forget where you took it because you will take it by where you collect it. We will take seven days. During Shiloh, we will pray for it. Amen. Amen. Many land has been poisoned. 
How do they poison your land? By bearing charms. By libation. You don't do it, somebody is doing it. You are in the house of God, somebody is in the house of God that is, doesn't believe in your God and is doing those things. Can you take the child away here? Mommy, take the baby away or give her the things she likes the most. Praise the Lord. So, this land can lock you up and you need a key to open the, the, the land. As long as your feet is on this ground, no prosperity. Now, today I want to tell you, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't know who put those words. We've been talking about the keys. You know the key of knowledge? The key of the house of David? He said, I will lay it on your shoulder. We have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We have the key of Hades and death. We have the keys to the bottomless pit or the key to the abyss. During these 90 days of praying and fasting, we will be using those keys. Some of them we will use them manually. Some of them we will use them automatically. You believe it, things will happen in your life. Amen. I believe the key that has been displayed a lot again and again is the automatic keys of faith. When you have the key of faith in your hand, the impossible become what? Possible. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. It says, if you believe, if you can say, Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. If you believe, all things are possible to him that believes. How many things will be possible for you? That is key that you need to use. It means all the door can be open if you have faith. If you have faith, every door that they may have locked against you will open by itself. I say it will open by itself. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrow of the evil one. Take up the shield of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Speak the word of God to that mountain. Don't be afraid. You are not the one who started moving mountain. Move them again. The mountain has been there before for many, many years. There are mountains that arise only in September, October, November, December. Command them to move. They will go. Stand up on your feet right where you are. Say, every mountain that is standing on my way. The mountain that arises every month of September, October, November, December. Be removed and be cast into the sea. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, there is someone here with a serious problem. And you don't know what to do. <laughs> I want you to pray again. You will call the blood of Jesus three times. You will call the fire of God three times. Command that mountain. You, I'm talking to you. Move now. Be removed and be cast into the sea. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Of Jesus. With power. Of Jesus. With fire. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. All the mountain. Move. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command that mountain to be removed and be cast into the sea. Maria Basakema. Jesus, my name, we pray. Thank you. You may sit down. The key of faith needs you to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The key of faith does not work by itself. It works with the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Speak the Word of God to that mountain. 
Curse that fig tree. Don't be afraid. Curse it, the fig tree. Curse that serpent. Curse it. You will see the result will be wonderful. There is what we call the key of knowledge. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Stand your ground. <laughs> Uh, that is what Paul told us from the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Whether you like it or not, there is a day of evil. Evil day. You say, ha, ah, evil day. But you can stand against that evil day. When you have the key of knowledge in your hand, you knew that these things can happen anytime. Use the word of God. Don't speak like uh, Job. You say, the things that I was afraid of has happened to me. Don't say things like that. Don't just be quick to give up to that stubborn problem. Don't be quick to surrender to that stubborn problem. Stand with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When Elijah came and said, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no rain, no Jew. The king was asking, whose son is that? Who is his father? I don't know his father. And indeed his father was not known. That's why somebody here, no matter what happened to your parents, they will know you in this land of the living in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your children will be known in this land of the living in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The key of knowledge is in the hand of anyone that draw closer to God. James chapter 4 verse 8. James chapter 4 verse 8. Read with me James chapter 4 verse 8. Hmm? Go ahead. Come near to God. And he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And purify your heart, you double-minded. My main goal here, I want you just to come near to God and he will come near to you. Hallelujah. Amen. How do I come near to God? Take 90 days of prayer and fasting if you are not part of it. If you are not part of 90 days of prayer and fasting, it is time to surrender your life. God wants people that will rule in the midst of his enemy. And these people, he must send them like an arrow. These people, he will send them to go out there and destroy the homes that scatter Judah, Israel, Jerusalem. There are things in your family that nobody can change it unless you take this 90 days of prayer and fasting. Let me tell you the truth. There are people in your family who will never get married until you take this 90 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. There are people in your family, they will never be free from sorcery until you engage in this 90 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. You will be amazed because they will come and confess openly. They will tell you, you are disturbing us. Your prayer is tormenting us. Then you know where your problem is coming from. There are many people here, God wants to bless you. There is no other way to bless you, but you must take this 90 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. Ask Jehoshaphat. In his younger age, he was not strong enough. Three kings, four kings gathered together to come and make war against him. He did not know what to do. He engaged in prayer and fasting. At the end of the day, he did not lift up his finger to fight. He just went to collect the plunder. That is what will happen in the life of somebody here. Amen. For those that have taken 90 days of prayer and fasting, you will not finish it empty-handed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Another key you need to use to be successful, prosperous. You want to live a stress-free life. Key of obedience. What? Obedience. That key of obedience will make you even to live a prosperous life. Because my Bible says from the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. 
Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you are willing and obedient. Let me hear you say it. And what will happen to you? You will do what? Now, you will never eat the bread of sorrow again in your dreams in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will eat the good things of the land. You will drive the best things of the land. All those things you need, here, you need it here in the land of the living. In heaven, we don't need it. You are not interested. Hallelujah. God has put us in the land of the living to reign. God has put us in the land of the living not to live a suffering life. People are suffering because they want to suffer. The way they abuse the word of God is if God did not exist, but if they knew the future. Tell your neighbor, no eyes have seen. No ears has heard. No human mind has conceived. The things God is doing for me. The Lord is doing great things for you and he will keep on doing great things for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Another key you need to use to, to open any door at will. Any door that you want to open, they will open by itself. Is the key of prayer. The key of what? Prayer. John chapter 14, verse 13, verse 14. And whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in the name of Jesus Christ, what will happen? And one of the last keys that I can put in your hand right now is the name of Jesus Christ itself. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The cripple stood up and walked. Hallelujah. Did you learn something today? God bless you. Please close your eyes, bow your head. You are here, you say, Apostle, pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Wonderful. That's exactly what he will do for you. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Raise your right hand. Push it above your head. Jesus in heaven will see your hand. Here on earth I will see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful. You need to be very quick and obedient to the word that is coming to you. Push your hand up. Praise the Lord. Sister, you lay hand on sister. Brother, you lay hand on brother. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Push your hand up. Say, Apostle, please pray for me. I want this connection. I want Jesus to be the door of my life. I want Jesus for the rest of my life. He must be my shepherd. I want him to lead me in green pasture. Push your hand up. Some of you are praying with me. You are online. Right where you are. Keep your hand up. God bless you. Now you will pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. You've done well to give your life to Jesus. After a few minutes, I will come back on the altar for let my people go. Amen. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Shalom, family. Thank you for joining us today. Stay connected to CFC Push by following us on your favorite social media platforms, like our Facebook page at CFC Push Ministries. Follow us on Twitter at PushMeanTV. 
follow us on Instagram at pushmin.tv. Follow us on TikTok at pushmin.tv. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at CFC Push. Remain blessed.